If you are old enough to remember Y2K, you may remember Beanie Babies. Back in the late 90s, these plush toys were once some of the most sought after items consumers could get their hands on, often selling for hundreds, if not thousands of dollars. But thanks to a variety of factors, including marketing mistakes by the company itself, the market demand for these toys seemingly crashed overnight, never to recover, leaving thousands of collectors and investors with millions of now worthless plushies. Fast forward to today, and Lego, now recently ranked as the most valuable toy brand in the world, is currently experiencing many of the same accolades that Beanie Babies once did in the 90s. Sales are at all-time highs, and demand for certain items have driven collectors to pay eye-watering sums to get their hands on rare, coveted sets. The demand in some cases has grown so great, some investors have reported they now invest solely in Lego because they are seeing greater returns than that of stocks, bonds, and even gold. But with all this hype, is the Lego market now at risk of suffering the same fate as that of the Thai Corporation? To find out, I've been researching the many factors that contributed to the downfall of the once mighty stuffed animal kingdom. By comparing data against trends in the Lego market, I've been looking for similarities that may be early indicators that a future collapse is imminent. But how many of these red flags exist? The results just may shock you. So to fully understand this phenomenon, we need to go back almost 30 years to 1995 when the Thai Corporation released their first limited edition run of Beanie Babies. By creating a sense of scarcity and exclusivity, Thai was single-handedly changing the ways toys were marketed and sold. Demand for the cuddly creatures grew, and as Thai began retiring specific designs for production, that demand began to skyrocket. This fueled a frenzy amongst would-be collectors and investors who were all vying to get their hands on those cute little critters. The limited availability of specific animals meant people were going to extraordinary lengths to ensure they were able to snag their favorite characters. Lines at retail stores stretched out the door and down the streets, and many retailers were constantly understocked, leaving people desperate to find another avenue to get their animal fix. Enter the internet. The dot-com craze was still in its infancy, but its limitless potential was just the fuel Beanie Babies needed to send this phenomenon absolutely supersonic. Almost overnight, forums and chat rooms were filled with people all over the world meeting and creating communities based around their favorite toys. E-commerce platforms like eBay soared to new heights as investors and scalpers found a new avenue to market their collections to a now global market. It was quickly becoming a modern day gold rush with hundreds of folks eagerly hoping to strike it rich, cashing in on the beanbag boom. So how does any of this relate to Lego? For starters, the Lego group can credit much of their modern day appeal to many of the same factors that made Thai so popular back in the 90s. One of those factors is rarity. Lego products are produced in limited batches and are retired after a short production period. This creates a desire for collectors to scoop them up before they disappear from retail shelves. The second factor, which is absolutely huge, is the emotional appeal of Lego products. By cashing in on the childhood memories of their adult clientele, Lego has tapped into many people's nostalgia with theme sets specifically made for older fans, who see these retro wave kits as more than just toys, but as a special connection back to their youth. Sets from the Icons line, such as the Pac-Man Retro Arcade, Lion Knight's Castle, and the Transformer sets, just to name a few, are all targeted towards the sentimental millennial looking to build and display a part of their childhood. And speaking of well-loved brands, licensing partnerships with big names such as Star Wars, Nintendo, Disney, and many, many more have given LEGO access to millions of new potential collectors and fans residing within these already well-established fan groups. With all of these communities coming together under one giant buildable umbrella. Lego has spawned a huge community of people all around the world that come together to meet, trade, and share their collections in many of the same way Beanie Baby collectors did decades prior. And just as back then, all of this enthusiasm has created an investment potential with many collectors treating their Lego as potential future investments. As we all now know, the long-term investments would never pay out for Beanie Baby owners. But will the same be true for Lego enthusiasts? If so, what was it specifically that caused the Beanie Baby boom to go belly up? 
in my mind, it wasn't just one singular thing. It was a multitude of factors that combined together that ultimately led to their decline. One of these things was oversaturation. Thai, in an effort to meet consumer demand, began producing record numbers of the plush toy, going as far as even to unretire specific popular products. The results sent a wave through the secondary markets as Beanie Babies that were once considered rare started to become much more common, causing their value to collapse as the demand dwindled amongst collectors. Now, Lego tried similar tactics like this with the Legend line in the early 2000s. During that period, we saw direct re-releases of popular sets from the late 80s and early 90s. Examples of these sets included the Black Seas Barracuda, the Metro Liner Train, and the Breezeway Cafe, just to name a few. In more recent times, we have seen numerous themes, most notably the Star Wars theme, see popular kits which have gotten one or in some cases several refreshes and re-releases. In both instances, the argument could be made that these have significantly weakened the market value for some of their long-retired counterparts. And speaking of markets, one of the largest factors involved in the Beanie Baby collapse was a speculative bubble created by would-be investors. Since many saw Beanie Babies as an investment opportunity, collectors and investors alike began to buy and hoard as many of the items as they believed to be rare. Banking on the hopes that by holding onto large quantities of these rare plushies, the value of these plushies would continue to skyrocket and then they could later cash out, making huge profits in the process. The problem was, this created a market bubble and as more people entered into the market hoping to invest, rather than for a genuine love of the actual product, demand began to quickly exceed the actual value of the toys being produced. There are countless examples of this within the various LEGO sub-themes, and there are many well-documented examples of investors buying up as many examples of in-demand kits as they can, hoping to cash in once LEGO retires a particular set. Some have even gone as far as stealing particularly rare sets, like this case in Oregon, where police were said to have uncovered almost $200,000 in stolen LEGO property. With such a rise in the demand for the product, LEGO, like Ty, is also facing a number of other problems stemming from people trying to fill that unmet demand. Enter counterfeiters. With high demand sets being listed at eye-popping prices in the secondary market, and the retail prices of new LEGO ever climbing, overseas manufacturers have been quick to fill the gap by producing cheap, bootleg copies of popular sets. Many examples can be found online offering current popular or long retired, highly coveted sets at a fraction of their retail value. Now, initially this wasn't seen as a large issue as it was easy to distinguish counterfeits from the originals by the overall lack of quality between the two. In recent years, however, the quality of the bricks and counterfeit sets has become almost equal to that of the Lego brand, making it much harder for collectors to spot fakes. It has also created a solid alternative avenue for collectors who are less worried about brand authenticity to add examples of these rare kits to their collection at a fraction of the price that they would pay otherwise. On top of all this, perhaps the final nail in the coffin for the Beanie Babies was the financial recession in 2001. Hard economic times make for slow sales as people begin to spend less and less on non-essential items. Many began desperately trying to unload their vast collections in order to liquidate some assets. This led to a flood of product being released onto the market all at once. In a desperate race to the bottom, sellers began to slash prices more and more, trying to rid themselves of now unsellable inventory until eventually the market bottoms out. As current world markets continue to stagnate in 2024 and fears of greater market downturns seem more and more prevalent online, it's not out of the realm of possibility to think that we could see a similar surge of collections hitting the open market in the coming months. Now, just how severe the impact of such an event would be at this point, however, is entirely speculative. So now on to modern day. The company of Thai is now a mere shadow of its former self, but it does continue to produce Beanie Babies to this day. This gives me hope that if the Lego market does in fact collapse at some point, the company would be able to weather the storm and continue to produce amazing products for its core fan base. What are your thoughts on this? I'm interested to get the perspective of everyone in the Lego hobby right now. So if you're a reseller, investor, or just an avid collector, comment your thoughts down below and share what you've been experiencing recently. Are the lights still green for Lego or are you seeing potential red flags? But regardless of what does transpire, 
I personally plan to continue enjoying this hobby for many, many years to come, and I hope everyone out there does too. So until I see you guys in the next video, happy building, everybody.